Good afternoon and welcome to today's session of Imagine America Radio, our continuing Career College Exposition webinar series. My name is Lee Doubleday and I'm the Director of Operations here at the Imagine America Foundation. I'm excited about today's career topic, the overlooked value of technical school certificates and associate degrees sponsored by Universal Technical Institute, or UTI as they're known by. UTI is this country's leading provider of high quality career focused education at 16 locations nationwide. UTI is also a 21 year sponsor of the Imagine America Scholarship and Award Programs, having provided admissions based financial aid to more than 16,000 enrolling Imagine America students. Without taking valuable time from our presenter, let me refer any and all inquiries about the Imagine America Foundation and our scholarship programs to our website, which is www.imagine-america.org. Since our beginning in 1999, Imagine America remains a leading sponsor of scholarship aid to enrolling high school students. However, our country faces a serious shortage in certified technicians. We hear from employers in virtually all sections of the country desperately looking for qualified employees, so we need to do more. Our partner in today's presentation, again, is Universal Technical Institute, and joining us today to discuss in detail the looming technician shortage and how UTI is helping meet this need is Dr. Stephen Coyle. Dr. Coyle is a nationally recognized expert in this area with an extensive K-12 background, so you're in good hands today. But before turning the program over to Dr. Coyle, let me outline today's agenda. Today's session of Imagine America Radio will be 30 minutes maximum with question and answers at the end of the presentation. All participants can submit questions while the presentation is in session via the Q&A feature or the chat feature in this Zoom meeting. At the end of the presentation, I will then offer any questions offered by the participants and we'll address as many questions as possible and provide written responses in follow-up emails if necessary. We will have a hard close at 2.30 p.m. So without taking any more time out of today's presentation, let me turn today's session over to Dr. Stephen Coyle. Dr. Coyle, the floor is yours. Well, thank you, Lee, and good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for spending a few minutes of your day with me. Let's get right into the presentation. I wanna just uh, say just a few things about UTI. Uh, we are the leading provider of technicians in the transportation industry. We offer nationwide training. We now have 16 locations. I love saying that because for so long, we had 12 locations. We just added uh, two new campuses, one in Austin, Texas, and the other in South Florida. But we've also acquired MIAT, the Michigan Institute of Aeronautic Technology. We have a campus in Camp, Michigan, and Houston, Texas. So that moves us up to... Um, to 16, but the significance of the nationwide training is the huge advantage it gives our students when they're looking for a career. You'd be hard pressed to walk into a dealership and say UTI and they wouldn't know who we are. We're well known nationwide and we have students employed all over the country. So it gives our students a leg up, you might say, in the uh, com uh, competition for careers out there by having the, um, the nationwide presence. We offer eight, soon to be 17 STEM uh, areas that we, that we teach in, auto diesel collision, motorcycle marine, NASCAR, CNC, and welding. When you look at this page, you think, well, okay, so I gotta fit into one of these, but there are literally hundreds of careers possible within these eight. Uh, some students, for instance, they, they might love cars, but they really don't see themselves actually working on cars. And so the question is, what could they do in this industry? Well, first thing that comes to mind with me would be like an insurance uh, claims adjuster for an insurance company. When you hit a deer, you see everything on the outside that was damaged. What you don't see is all the sensors and computer components that are damaged on the inside. A trained technician would know to look for that. So insurance companies love to hire our graduates for that very reason. So that's just one example of things that, that you could do other than just actually turning wrenches um, in the transportation industry. And then this is really an important screen that the industry relationships, uh, the alliances that we have with manufacturers. While some schools may have one or two, we have 35 plus um, uh, manufacturer alliances. And these are the big dogs in the industry, BMW, GM, Ford, Lexus, Fent, um, you know, go on and on. Um, these are all strong, stable companies 
and they offer great career opportunities. As I often say, we're not preparing for Jiffy Lube. We're preparing for these type of companies. This is who this is who our students are going to go to work for. So we have very strong partnerships developed with this group. Now, what I really wanted to come and talk to you about today is you and your relationship with students and your relationship with parents. And just hopefully I can give you a few tid tidbits that can help you um, with that endeavor. First, let me start with technical versus soft skills. You know, there's no doubt that to succeed in the modern economy, students need skills, no doubt about it. But oftentimes we think, well, they've either got technical skills or they've got the soft skills. In reality, they need both. The technical skills, of course, that's working on a car, working on a truck, a motorcycle, a boat, whatever the case may be, um, you know, a welder. Those are the technical skills, and of course they need those, but you also have to have the soft skills to go with it. The, the communication skills, both verbal and written, are huge. If you're a, an auto technician, you're diagnosing someone's car, you're trying to determine what's wrong with it so that you can know how to fix it. Well, then you have to convey that information to the customer. You know, you just don't tear into a car and start working. You have to get their authorization, it's okay. And to get the proper authorization, you need to let them know what is really wrong with the vehicle. So you have to have those communication skills to say, okay, here's what's wrong with your car. Here's what we can do to fix it. Here's how much it's gonna cost to have that fixed. But th that's important information that the customer needs to know. And, uh, and of course, writing that all up at the end as well. So the, so the uh, customer has a copy of everything that happened for warranty issues, that kind of thing. So these two go hand in hand with each other. And at UTI, we work very hard on the soft skills too, along with the hard skills, so that, um, so that our students can succeed in the dealerships. This might be a startling statistic to you, Almost all certificates, 94% to be exact, and nearly three out of five or 57% of associate degrees are awarded in career-oriented fields. That might surprise you because you're thinking your students are going off to college to get a bachelor's degree or maybe a master's degree later on, when in reality, they're not. They're going to school to learn a specific skill, learning a trade, and you can see over over half of the associate degrees are awarded in career-oriented areas and, and almost all the certificates are as well. So keep that in mind that a lot of your students are looking for this. They're not looking for um, a bachelor's degree necessarily. And this screen that kind of goes along with the previous screen also says the same thing. 50% of students taking undergraduate coursework are enrolled in certificate and associate degree programs. We have to remember the, the students that we have today. They are now in the present, in the moment people. They are not patient. They want it, they want it now, they want it quick. And so more and more students are becoming more project-based learners. Uh, it doesn't mean that all of your students are. There's some of your students that they're going to go to school for four, five, six years to, to achieve their, their educational dream. Well, these guys are not. They're just not into Greek mythology and, and 20th century world literature and all these kind of things. They're just not. And I'm not discounting those. I'm just saying this type of student, they're not into that. They, they're into the hands-on learning. They want to get it now so they can get in, learn the trade, get out and get employed and start making money. So that kind of goes along with the type of student learners that we have in school today. Now, this is a guide that I want to give you. Um, if you're looking at technical certificate programs for your students, here are three things that you need to be looking at. Number one, do they have industry relationships? Number two, do they offer an occupationally focused curriculum? And then finally, employment assistance. So let's back up. Industry relationships, that's the screen I was showing you earlier, the 35 plus industry alliances that we have with manufacturers. These industry relationships are vital because that's who you're training the students to go to work for. Why are students going to school in the first place? To learn a trade, to learn a skill. That's why they're coming to school. And so we've got to give that to them. But the industry relationships 
that's who they're going to go to work for. So we want to make sure we're aligned. And that goes into the second part, occupationally focused curriculum. What are these employers looking for? What are these dealerships looking for? They're looking for skills. They're looking for specific skills. That's why with our school, as opposed to like a community college, for instance, where community college is a little bit more of the general education, we're more manufacturer specific education. Because we're gonna teach students, prepare them for GM, for Toyota, for um, Porsche, for BMW, whatever the case may be. We're preparing them for that because that is what the employers are looking for. And then finally, the employment assistance. As I said a while ago, why are you going to school in the first place? To get employed. That's the whole idea here. So the employment assistance is huge. We at UTI don't feel like our job is done until we've actually helped the students to get into their chosen career. And notice I said chosen career. We're not just going to put them at McDonald's or someplace like that. We're going to place them into the career that they chose. And keep in mind that these three inter intertwine with each other. For instance, it's very difficult to have employment assistance if you don't have the industry relationships. That's vital and vice versa. And then the occupationally focused curriculum, because what, what's the industry looking for? They are looking for competency-based credentials. They're looking for skills. That's what it's all about. So these three go hand in hand. So, so please, when you're looking at a certificate program, make sure all these three are in place so that your students can have the most success that possible. Now I wanna switch gears. IGNITE, IGNITE Worldwide. Some of you may have heard of it, some of you may not have. IGNITE is an acronym, Inspiring Girls Now in Technology Evolution. We're excited to partner with IGNITE because the idea of IGNITE is to get more girls involved in STEM. There's been a party going on for a long time, and it seems like only the guys have been invited and the girls haven't. And so now what we're trying to do is show girls that STEM is possible for them too. It's not just for guys. And that's what this program is doing. Is it's exposing girls to STEM careers. Here at UTI, about 4% of our student population is female. And we want to change that because half the population in this world is female. So we should have more girls involved in STEM. So that's why we're really excited about the, the Ignite Worldwide program. I love their mantra. You can't be what you can't see. Think about it. When is the last time you saw a female welder, a female plumber, female carpenter, female auto tech, diesel tech? I can go on and on. You, you know, have you seen females working like on, on the highway crews, you know, building and constructing highways and bridges and that kind of thing? And if you do see one, it's like, oh, wow, they got a girl working out there too. Wow. It shouldn't be that way. It shouldn't be a novelty that girls can do this too. They just have never been exposed to it. That's what the mantra, you can't be what you can't see. And these girls don't have any, anybody to look up to. They don't have the role models. Kathy Rajveller, who's the CEO and founder of Ignite Worldwide, started this program in 1998, and it's steadily grown into uh, where it's at today. And we're really excited to be a uh, partner with that. We've already hosted um, three events at our campuses. We have more lined up. We've had over 100 girls at every one of our events. It's pretty simple. Part one is we invite girls to come to our campus to meet with a panel of women in STEM. These are women who are in STEM careers right now because once again, you can't be what you can't see. Well, we're gonna show the girls what's out there available to them. Allow the girls the opportunity to talk with these women to see, you know, how did you get into this program? Was it, was it hard? Was it scary? Did people make fun of you? I mean, all these questions they have, and they, they want answers. So that's where the, the, um, the STEM panel comes in play. Then we do field trips. We have them come to our campus, for instance, so they can see a true STEM school in action. They can see what, uh, how we teach to see that, you know, to show them that, hey, you can do this too. And then the third part that kind of goes along with that is we offer, you know, STEM workshops. How is a girl going to know if they like something or want to do something if they don't get to try it? So we, we have welding simulators. We have different STEM activities for them to do so they can actually experience STEM. 
to see if it's something that, that uh, they could see themselves doing for the rest of their lives. And then finally, we encourage girls to go to conferences, um, to uh, go into breakout sessions where they can be around other girls just like them. Because so many times they're thinking, you know, gosh, am I just weird that I like this? And no, it's just that girls have just never done this before uh, in the numbers that should be happening. And so we want to show them that, hey, this is possible for you. Plus, let's face it, we need them because we need the, the skills gap is not closing, it's widening. And so we need more bodies, both male and female, uh, into STEM-based careers. Ignite is catching on. It's, it's gaining momentum all the time. The National Science Foundation, the Anita Board Social Impact Award, the ACTE Department of Education State Award. All these are, are happening. So they're starting to get the recognition and getting the notoriety. And so we're hoping that our partnership with them can help them uh, grow their program even more. Here's a, a statistic that really caught our eye because of the numbers that we have in our, uh, our STEM right now as well. Um, in 2013, there was a study done in Seattle where less than 5% of the girls were involved in STEM related fields. That's before Ignite. Three years later, that jumped to over 50%. It's surprising, but yet it's not. Because once again, the girls, you don't know what you don't know. The girls didn't know about all these careers that were that were possible for them. I just did a uh, career, uh, uh, a uh, school counselor workshop out in New Jersey just uh, a few weeks ago. And we had a girl speak there that she's a technician for um, Jaguar Range Rover out, out there. And she started off in criminal justice, but she didn't know she could do this other stuff. And she quit that program and moved into the transportation industry, came to UTI, graduated, and is doing very well. But once again, when she was in high school, she didn't know that was a possibility for her. So that's why it's so rewarding to see this number jump like this. And we're hoping that it's gonna continue to jump even more. We love to help our students get the resources that they need to make education possible, to make it affordable for them. We work with student groups like FFA, Hot Rodders of Tomorrow, Skills USA. Top Tech Challenge. These are all scholarship offering uh, programs where we can, we can help students to get the resources that they need. We know education is expensive nowadays anywhere you go. So we're just trying to find ways to make it more affordable. And that's one way we do it. Another is working with foundations like the Imagine America Foundation. We're so thankful for them. As Lee said, we're a 21 year sponsor and counting <clears throat> because we see what what's happened the students have an opportunity to to get a scholarship to help them to go on to school so we're very grateful for imagine america and other foundations out there that work with students and we we love to partner with them and then of course we love to partner with industry this is something if you're not partnering with industry that's a big miss for you because they really want to partner with you they will and if you're too afraid to ask then ask me and i'll help you i love talking to these guys because they do want to work with you for instance, we work, our, our newest alliance, our manufacturer alliance is Agco Corporation and Fent Tractors. We just did the FFA convention with Fent, had a huge booth there and it was very popular. And then just last week, I was in Lyle for the grand opening of our Fent training program. That Fent training program is paid for by Agco. They pay for the program. They even pay for the students' housing. What a great opportunity for students to be able to do, to do a program like that. And then, they're, and they're almost guaranteed employment because once FIT puts them through there, obviously they want them, you know, so that's, that's a, a great opportunity as well. So we partner with, with um, industry to, to um, make the education more affordable, but also to give students a place to go when they do graduate, you know, to, to put their skills to work. We give over $15 million in scholarships each year. But uh, if you have the secret on how to get students to fill out scholarship applications, please share that with me after this broadcast because I'd love to visit with you. But what we use is the tuition reimbursement incentive program called TRIP, 
we're very excited about this program because we have literally hundreds of dealerships across the country that participate. They offer student loan repayment assistance, hiring and city packages, tool purchase assistance, sign-on bonuses, tenure bonuses. They, they do these things to help students to, uh, to make their education more affordable. But there is a catch. The students have to earn it. These, these dealerships, these companies aren't just going to give them money for nothing in return. They're looking for the best students they can get their hands on. So obviously, you know, they're, they're looking for the, the top students there. But the rewards are great for those that will work hard. Two key takeaways today. Number one, high school counselors and educators can strengthen all post-secondary education pathways, including certificate programs. In other words, this is not plan B any longer. This is plan A for some of your students. You know, I'm so tired of hearing, well, you know, if, if, you're, um, if it doesn't turn out that you can become a veterinarian, if it doesn't turn out you can be a nurse, well, you can always work on cars. Oh, you could always be a welder. You could always be a plumber. No, these are highly trained technicians. This is not, as I said, this is not a backup plan any longer. This is plan A for some of your students and we need to treat it that way. We don't need to be coaching our students out of this because these are very lucrative careers and it's what the students love to do. So why would we fight that? We want to encourage that as, as much as possible. And that's where the parents come in because parents oftentimes are still thinking the other way. They're not thinking about these type of careers for their sons and daughters, but we need to show them that, hey, these are lucrative careers as well. They can make very good money and be well respected in their community for the skills that they have. So we need to treat it that way in, in everything that we, we do with these students. Let's celebrate their successes just like we do with the other students too. And one, one little tidbit I would give you here on this is if you're still calling your events college fairs, change that name. Call it career fairs. That includes college, but that also includes the trade schools, the, the career focused schools, those areas too. Because if you just say college fair, they're just thinking about the state colleges and universities. They're not going to think about a cosmetology school. They're not going to think about a welding school or an auto diesel school. So, you know, change the name. That, that will entice more students to want to become involved. And then the second takeaway today, higher education leaders are instrumental in enabling students to acquire education beyond high school. In other words, students need skills. Some of your students will go to work right after high school and some of them will make it just fine. Some of them may get lucky enough to catch on with a company that will teach them skills that they need. But more times than not, students get lost. They, get, they, they fall through the crack, as we like to say, because they don't get the training. Remember, a mentorship program is only as good as the mentor. If the mentor is not good, you're not gonna get the training you need. And remember too, what are employers looking for? They're looking for skills. What do you bring to the table? So the more skills you have, the more marketable you are, the more valuable you're gonna to be to that employer. You know, I'm a retired educator. I know what you guys do on a daily basis. So I said, I was a teacher, coach, high school uh, administrator, been there, done that, bought the t-shirt, I like to say. And I know what you guys do on a daily basis, working with students. You talk about career readiness. You talk about career pathways. You talk about scholarships. Uh, you talk about supply and demand in, in the, the different industries. I know you're doing these things. What do we want to do? We just want to partner with you. We want to help you with that endeavor because we know there's only one of you or maybe two of you in a school that has hundreds of students and you know, you're overloaded. So we'd like to help you any way we can. We offer open houses at our school for, for students and their parents to come in to see what we have, to um, take part in STEM demonstrations. We also bring those to you. We have a truck and trailer. We have workshops in career readiness, career pathways and STEM. And these are all free, but we come out and we talk to students. It's not a UTI infomercial. It's to talk to all of your students about the needs. That they, that they all have. We know not every student's gonna to come to UTI and that's okay. We just wanna make sure students are making good choices, good informed choices. We wanna help with that and help you as much as possible. And talk to them about how to make school more affordable, what the economy is like. $10 an hour isn't gonna get you very far anymore. You know, you've got to be able to make more money than that. So we wanna 
work with you any way we possibly can to make that happen. I also offer, offer professional development. So if, they, if you wanna have something uh, for your staff, I'd be glad to come in and work with your staff. And once again, there's no charge for any of that either. I used to have to schedule those. I know how difficult they can be. So I'd love to work with you any way I can. And then finally, this is my contact information, my email address, my phone number was earlier in the presentation. I think Lee's gonna make this all uh, available to, to you, but please feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions, if you have any comments, good, bad, the ugly, I don't care. I'd love to hear from you. If there's something that I can do to, uh, to help you specifically, let me know what your need is and I'll see if there's a way I can, I can work with you. I just wanna thank you so much for spending a part of your day with me. I know you're busy people and um, your time is precious. So thank you for spending time with me and um, hope you picked up a few good tidbits out of here uh, and wish you good luck for the rest of your school year. Thank you. All right, thank you, Dr. Coyle. We are now gonna open this up for the Q&A portion of our presentation. I'm also gonna throw up a poll question. If you would like someone to contact you about presenting similar information to your seniors or to your uh, juniors and seniors at your school, please indicate so on the poll so that we know who to reach out to after this is over. Um, Dr. Quo, uh, the first question came in. This person wants to know about the FAFSA. Can students apply for a FAFSA in order to come to Universal Technical Institute? Absolutely. We are Title IV funded. So you do fill out a FAFSA to see if you qualify for financial aid. <laughs> and then once we get that information, then you'll be signed, assigned a financial aid advisor that will work with the student and their family to make uh, to put together a package uh, to make your education as, as affordable as possible. We'll look for scholarships, we'll look for grants, other avenues of, of monies that we can bring in to, uh, to help you make school more affordable. Yeah, that's great. I mean, it's very important that schools are Title IV eligible like Universal Technical Institute is uh, so that uh, they can apply for federal financial aid. Um, second question, this person wants to know, and this is a question we get quite often, Dr. Coyle, it's about uh, cost comparisons with community college programs and uh, maybe length of time. Can you talk a little bit about the difference between UTI and a community college? Wow, I've never heard had that question before. <laughs> <laughs> just, just kidding, yes, we do get it all the time. And it's a very fair question. First of all, let me be clear about something. We often get uh, compared to community colleges that, oh yeah, it, it, community college is the same thing as UTI does. No, they really don't. There were two different types of schools, both good, but both for different types of students. If you're, you know, we're more manufacturer specific and, you know, community colleges will have maybe one or two. Sometimes we have over 35. So manufacturer specific training is key to us. But the three biggest areas, I think, number one is time in school. You go to community college, you're going to be there two to three years. That's the bottom line. Uh, you come to UTI, you're going to be there nine to 17 months. We go straight through. We don't take summers off, spring breaks, thing like that, because the industry doesn't, so we don't either. So that's one difference. Number two is the alliances with the manufacturers. As I just mentioned, community colleges may have one. They might even have two. We have over 35. So that manufacturer-specific training is a huge component, and it's going to make you more marketable to get into a career. And then finally, the trip package that I just talked to you about. That is huge for students because it potentially gives them the opportunity to go to school for free. Now, once again, I'm not making any promises because that's on the student. They have got to do their part to get these kind of awards given to them because these dealerships they want the best they can get their hands on. So they're looking for the top students. But if you work hard, the rewards are great. All right, great. And um, just a few house cleaning items here before we close. This session has been recorded and will be placed on our website, which again is www.imagine-america.org. Uh, there's plenty of other information on that website as far as how to go about applying for the scholarship to go to Universal Technical Institute that's on there as well. Um, I will be sending you a recording of this presentation likely tomorrow with Dr. Coyle's contact information in the email. So if you want to ask him a question or if you want to schedule time for a representative to come and speak to students, um, feel free to reach out to him via that email. Um, I'm also going to be uh, presenting a survey. When you leave this meeting, there is a quick survey. It's only about four questions. If you wouldn't mind answering those for us, 
uh, that would be really helpful to us. Any kind of feedback we could get is always very much appreciated. And I just want to thank all of you for taking time out of your busy schedules to join us today. I know you've you're very busy, especially towards the end of the year as we gear up for the holidays and the start of 2022. So just really appreciate you taking some time to talk to us. I'd also like to thank Dr. Coyle for sharing with us today's presentation. On behalf of the Imagine America Foundation, Dr. Coyle and myself, thank you and have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye. <clears throat>